Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So this video is going to be a rant review on the Savior's Champion by Jenna Morrissey. Um, so yeah, let's just jump right into it. So the way I'm going to be doing this review is, um, like I said, it's going to be a rant review, so I'm kind of just going to rant about it. Um, I'm going to start this video up off with like a synopsis of the story. And then I'm going to go into like a spoiler free review. And then after that, I'm going to go into a spoiler review. And that's going to be like a really in-depth analysis of the book and just really digging into why I did not like this book. Before I continue, I just want to say, because I know people are really sensitive about like books they love and like their favorite authors. And I completely get that. I get so passionate about books. Like I was saying, um, I get really passionate about books too, so whenever somebody like bashes on my book I get really defensive about it, but I just wanted like to say before I get on with this, this review is that this isn't like an attack on the author or this isn't like an attack on you guys who like the book, um, it's just that I didn't like it, so this is just why I didn't like it. Also I want to say that I get like really passionate about books. <laughs> And just stories in general. So like, um, I'm if I get like heated and like angry and like annoyed about something, again, it's not like I'm getting angry at the author or angry at like the people who like it. It's just that this one thing or this couple of things really annoyed me about the book. Okay. So with that disclaimer out of the way, let's jump right in. Hi. Also, I live right next to JFK. So if if the planes going over my house annoy you, trust me, they annoy me too. Um, we can just ignore them together. So for those of you guys who don't know what this book is about, or just need like a little recap on the story, um, the Savior's Champion follows the story of a boy. Well, he's not a boy; he's twenty. Um, a man named Tobias, and he lives in a world where there is magic, but the only magic um, is derived from the savior. And the savior, she's like the god slash queen of the realm which they live in. And her duty is to like keep peace. Um, she just makes sure, she's the reason why um, this realm is thriving because it used to be chaotic and like nothing would grow. Everyone was like dying or starving until the first savior came along. And it was like a thousand years before the start of this book. And she just fixed everything. So she's worshipped as a god, um, and how her power is passed on, or her, how her power continues, is it's passed down from daughter to daughter, savior to savior, and um, in order to find a suitable husband for the savior so she can like pass along her magic, um, the father of the savior holds a tournament on her 20th birthday. Tobias, a little backstory on him. Um, he's kind of the breadwinner of the family now because his father died in an accident and his mother has to take care of his sister who was paralyzed in the accident. Um, so he's an artist, or he wants to be an artist but he can't anymore because he needs to work as a laborer in order to earn money to take care of his family. And he finds out the tournament. Well, everybody knows about the tournament, but he enters the tournament because his um because he wants to have money for his family. Whoever enters the tournament and gets accepted, the family gets a large sum of money. So that's why he enters. He doesn't really care about the savior. He's kind of cynical towards her. I'm assuming because of his backstory and um yeah, it just follows Tobias's journey through the tournament. So with that being said. I gave this story two stars, um, which I which I was really upset about because I really, really, really wanted to love this book. If you guys read it, oh, read if you guys watched my first um, video before this one, um, talking about me joining BookTube and like how I was excited to get back into reading, this was the first book that I chose because it had such a cool premises behind it. I really liked the idea of the story. And Jenna, who has a YouTube channel, I um, I want to be a writer, so I get a lot of my advice from her. And I just thought that she really gave out really good advice. So just to read the story 
and be like so disappointed in it. I don't know. It really just made me sad. So yeah, I gave this book two stars. Um, I wouldn't recommend it. This section is going to be spoiler free, so um, I'm not going to give away any like of the plot, any like major plot points or anything like that. This is just um, a little idea of why I did not like this book and why I wouldn't recommend it. I strongly believe that when writing a trilogy or just a series of books that each book has to be able to stand on its own um, outside of the whole entire trilogy. Each book should have, oops, that's way too much, look at that. Um, each book should be able to stand on its own legs. It should have its own beginning, middle, and end. Your first book should not be a setup for your second book. Your second book should be a continuation of your first book, if that makes sense. But I feel like each book should have its own story within the overarching trilogy or saga or a collection of books, um, if that makes sense. This book, I felt like, was a setup to the second book. I felt like we learned pretty much nothing in this book. I felt like the only reason this book exists is to introduce you to the second book. Like, I felt like nothing of importance happened. I feel like you could take this book out of the story and with a few flashbacks and dialogues from the, um, from the characters in the second book, you'd pretty much know what happened in the first book. Like, you don't really need the first book, and I, I hate feeling like that. So let me explain why. So I felt like this book was way too long for what happened in it. There are pages and pages and pages of characters talking about nothing. Like, um, there's a scene in the book with the two love interests, they, um, they're talking endlessly about paintings and like we already know Tobias is a good painter so that information like is irrelevant because we already know it but we learn nothing new about the characters we learn nothing new about the world in which they live in so I'm just like why is this taking up space like it just felt like it was I guess it was introducing you to their love I honestly don't even know because it just really annoyed me because I felt like it was taking up space Another thing is that this book started off with a bang. Like, Savior's mother dies in the beginning, and it just and it happens with a bang. And then we go right into the Pius's story, and then we go right into the tournament. So it all just like happens. And I I love when my stories like I'm starting in the like the middle of something, in the middle of something big. But then it slowed down, and we just got pages and pages of the love interest and Tobias speaking to each other and like we learned nothing from them talking to each other we learned nothing new about the world we learned nothing new about these characters we learned nothing new about the savior's powers or like why this tournament happened another thing that i really hate is that is when a book this book has really irritated me i don't like it that when i want an adventure action book fantasy and what i get is a love story like, don't get me wrong, I love love. Like, give me a romance any day. But not when I'm expecting this really cool adventure with like a tournament and like blood and like a story. But like what I got was this boring love story and I'm just like... <sighs> okay, so moving on to the characters, I felt like if you went to buy a or the love interest, then why were you in this book? I felt like none of the characters really contributed anything, which is why I said that you could take this book out of the um, out of the the story, and the second book would still make sense with a few flashbacks and like some dialogue from the characters, because honestly, none of these characters really did anything. And another thing I really hated is that all of the characters didn't seem like people. They seemed like, they seemed like cutouts of like the high school trope. Um, by the way, this story takes place in the high school. 
Like, I know it takes place in the ancient Greek fantasy setting, but this is a high school. Like, the characters are your typical um, head of the football player, uh, head of the football player, head of the football team, a douche football player, your mean girl cheerleader, your, dumb, your dumb blonde, like, the, the girl next door. And everyone in this book even spoke the same. Like, they all grew up in the same household. Like, the language, from the language they used to, like, the stuff they said and, like, the dialogue to each other. Like, it all felt like they were high schoolers who grew up in the same household. Like, the amount of time that these people talked about, like, cock, cock, fuck, apologies. Like, everyone said these words and in the exact same way. Even the princesses and, like, the women of the court and the freaking, don't get me started on, on Bonet, Bronus, the Sarbentine. Like, he spoke like he was the douchebag football player quarterback. Like, he felt, he felt like a teenager, which was, like, mind-boggling because he's, like, he has to be at least 40. And he's, like, the ruler of a... A freaking realm. His daughter's the freaking savior, but he spoke like he was in high school. I felt like there was no world building in this book, which sucks because I feel like it's so important in a fantasy world to have world building. Because like we don't live there, we've never been there, so we don't know the customs of how people interact. We don't know the laws. We don't know how magic works in this in this world. We don't know what people can and can't do, what they can and can't say. And like, by the end of this book, I was still asking those questions because I because I, we I learned nothing. <sighs> I, I'm just frustrated because I wanted to like this book, and I just ended up being really angry with it and um, just having so many questions. And yes, you can argue that all of my questions will be answered in the second book, but then I'm just like, then why am I reading the first one? The first one is supposed to set up the world. It's supposed to set up the characters. It's supposed to, I don't know. It's, it's supposed to be able to stand on its own. So I feel like if its purpose is just to lead me into the second book, why am I reading the first one? Okay, so this book ends, it just ends. Like, the, the ending of this book feels like the ending of a chapter. So I'm just like, that's it. I wasn't satisfied at all. I felt no reward for reading this or finishing it. And I don't know. I just felt, like, I felt cheated. <laughs> like, personally, I just felt cheated. So this is the spoiler section of my review. It's why, it's like a really in-depth analysis or review of the book and why I just did not like it at all <sighs> and it's a lot guys it's a lot um I'm gonna start off with what I did like about this book because um it wasn't all bad like I finished it and I didn't give it one star so it wasn't there was some stuff in it that I didn't like so there's a twist in this story and um I didn't like it I actually hated the twist. I am, it made a lot of what happened in this book not make any sense. And it, it, deemed, it deemed a lot of the characters useless after this twist happened. Because, um, okay, I'm just going to say it because this is the spoiler section. So the twist is that um, the girl who we think is the savior, her name is Cosima, She's not the savior. It turns out that the love interest of Tobias, her name's Layla, she's the love interest. I was really disappointed in this. Because like I said, it made a lot of what happened useless. But before I get into that, I guess I said I was starting off with what I did like about the book. So I liked how Jenna hid the hints of how Cosima wasn't really the savior and it was Layla throughout the book. I think she did that in a really cute way. She, um, she had it so that we were only introduced to Layla at nighttime because the saver skin glows in the daytime. Um, I liked that, like, Layla got all of these gifts. I like that, um, just things that Layla said and Layla, things that Layla did made more sense and it 
when we found out that she was the savior and like those little like trinkets hidden in like her gifts and the way the other character like Delphi for instance which is her best friend the way Delphi spoke about her and like it just and like the healing powers like how Tobias always got blessed it, it made sense and that was cute I liked how she did that um I also liked Delphi and Tobias's relationship I thought they had a cute little brother sister type relationship that felt natural I think it, it worked for these two characters and um that was nice um and I think that's it <laughs> I think those are the two things that I liked about this story um if I think of something else does my eyebrows look a hot mess this is the first time I'm using this product for my eyebrows I don't really like it. Okay, so now into some criticism. So, like I said, I hated the twist. I did not like the twist in the story at all because it rendered a lot of what the characters did and a lot of what happened in the story useless. For one of the big things was Cosima. I did not understand Cosima's character at all. It felt like she was just evil for evil's sake. Um, and I feel like that was with a lot of the characters in this book. I felt like they were either good or they were evil. And you, the evil people had like no redeeming qualities and the good people never did anything wrong. So you didn't, you didn't get to choose who you liked and who you didn't like. It was all like brought to you. Like this is who you have to like and this is who you have to dislike. And I hate it when like I don't get a choice of the characters I'm supposed to like and not like. That really annoys me. So I didn't like that. So back to Cosima, she's like, cause like I said, this is a high school. So she's your typical mean girl cheerleader and she's dropped it gorgeous and she knows it. She's like slutty, um, she talks down on people, she's bratty, she's bitchy, and she has no other personality than this. Everything she does is like, why? Why are you so mean? She was such a lost opportunity because I feel like she could have been such a cool character, either an ally or a villain, but then she was just reduced to your typical bratty, bitchy, mean girl captain of the cheerleader squad. Like, she betrays the group, which is um, Layla, who's the actual savior, Delphi, who's her best friend, and then um, Pe Pippa who's your residential dumb blonde. Um, and like, I'm like, why did she betray them? Like, she's described by the other characters as like clever. Um, by Pippa, she's described as sweet. And Layla said that she recently started to like pull away from the group. But then I'm just like, why? It's never explained why Cosima was so mean. It's never explained why Cosima, and you can argue that okay she's getting all this attention now um she likes the guys coming after her because none of these girls have stepped foot outside of the um their the castle because Layla I guess, I'm assuming because Layla's mother died and their excuse for keeping Layla and the girls inside was so nobody else could target them it's never explained so I could only assume just like why Cosima is so mean and vindictive is never explained, so I can only assume. It's like her only, her only purpose in the story is to make Layla look better by comparison. Because I, I never understood why Cosima acted the way she did. Which sucks because she could have been such a cool character, especially if she stayed as the savior. Then what she did kind of did make sense because you can argue that um, she's acting out because she's never had a mother, she's acting out because she's finally getting attention, she's acting out because... <sighs> By the way, the father is trying to kill the savior, um, but we'll get back to that. Yeah, that could be another reason that she's acting out, but no, she's just mean for mean's sake, and I'm just like, okay. Moving on to Kaleo, the shepherd. We're calling him the shepherd because I don't know how to pronounce his name. Moving on to the shepherd, um, why was he so evil? Like, I get that he's an assassin, that he was hired by the father to kill the daughter 
We'll get back to that. But like, why was he so evil? He looked like he could have had such a cool backstory because I need to finish my makeup. Because um, um, he was calm. He was cool. He was collective. But he was also a psychopath. So like, he would he would taunt somebody with a smile on his face, and someone would get in his face, and he'd never lose his smile. He was he was just a really really cool character. And I wanted to get to know him and find out why he turned into this person. Why he became like a hired gun, why he has no sympathy, why he has no empathy, why he's always he has to always be in control. Like we could have really dived into this character and like really learned a lot about him. But no, he's reduced to like the stereotypical bully. Um he lashes on to Tobias as all the characters do and like he just bullies him um and I'm just like why how did you get to this point we never get to find out and we're never going to find out I was hoping okay maybe in the second book we find out but he dies in the end so I'm just like what was the point of him being here especially such a cool character like what's the point of this person being here um that just really annoyed me. Also, what's the point of the other characters being here? We don't really get a backstory from any of them. We kind of get like half a page of like stereotypical backstory of why each character, like a little sob story of why each character joined the the tournament. The the tournament, a lot of them didn't, didn't join for the savior, they just needed the money, or they needed like a distraction, or they got, got hired as an assassin. Um, we'll get to that. But we never get to know these characters. So I, did, I don't care for them. When I didn't care when anybody died, and that includes Milo, who is the best friend to Tobias, I didn't care. Because we know nothing about these characters. And why would I sympathize with the death of someone I know nothing about? Like, they just died and I was just like, oh, another one bites the dust. I guess we're closer to the end. Tobias is your typical main character, perfect, always does the right thing. Even when he's wrong, he's right character. Like, there's nothing really special about him. He's handsome. Everybody thinks so. The girls go wild. The guys go wild. He's strong. He can defeat two what beast because everyone gets like this little section that they're a part of he's part of the servants i think and then the beast who are like the, the the strong burly fighters he just defeats two of them with ease by the way and yes you can argue that like he was he was um protected by the savior during these fights, but like still, it was such a cop out. And he chokes one of them to death, and that was just so unbelievable to me. So yeah, Tobias is your typical perfect main character who can do no wrong and is always right, even when he's not, but he's always right. Layla is your typical, just think of Tobias as a girl, that's Layla. I don't know, there's nothing really to talk about them, just think of like two perfect characters, and that's Layla and Tobias. Another character I want to mention, his name is Flynn. I felt like he was the most human out of all of the characters. Um, cause he showed weaknesses and he showed like envy and jealousy and bravery even. Um, but then in the end he just turned into your typical popular football player jock. Like, he just turned into him in the end of the story. Um, another thing I didn't like is every single character, who they are in the beginning of the story is who they are at the end, which I don't like. I feel like in each book, in a, in a book in general, and especially in a book, in a series, like, at the end of an arc, or at the end of, like, the book, they need to have changed in some significant way. Nobody did this. Um... So, again, why am I reading this book? Because nothing happened. <sighs> Going, getting onto world building, like I said, there's no world building in this book. We know nothing about 
the savior. We know nothing about her powers. We know nothing about um just we don't know anything about this world. Let me just give you an example. So Bonus, Bronus, I mean, he's the sovereign team, he's Layla's father. I didn't understand how much power he didn't or did have over the kingdom. And at the same time I didn't understand how much power Layla had. Because they both did these really weird things. Like, Layla, Delphi, and Pippa, um, Delphi and P Pippa are a part of her court. They're like ladies in waiting, I guess I'll call them. They all traveled down during the tournament. Um, they traveled down to the contestants to help heal them and feed them. And this was against the rules. But I'm just like, how did how did the sovereign team not know this? Especially when he had like the proctor there. Like he saw them. He saw them, right? Why didn't he report this to Bonin? Like that's your king. And then if you're choosing Layla, like why did you disobey her when Cosima wanted to kill Raphael? Like it just didn't make sense. Like how much power does these people have? And then there's a part in the book where they're in their arena and they're fighting. Um, I think this is when Tobias is fighting the giant. Um, and oh, maybe this is after, because they were rooting from him. Anyway, there's a part in the book where the girls in the audience they flash their boobs at like the the contestants, and I'm just like, it just didn't fit with the idea that I had of the world in which they lived in because I had to make up a world in my head because there was so little um, little information about it. So like when the characters kept cussing and like or when the characters would use like the word God instead of the savior or when the characters would like like that scene when like they flashed their boobs like it made me think of more modern times instead of like the idea of the world I had in my head and it, it just really took me out of the story if that makes sense. I don't know if I'm explaining that well. So yeah, I I can't even comment on the world building because there is no world building. Um, you kind of just have to make it up and then a lot of things don't make sense. So yeah, like my point is just there's pretty much no world building in this book which really like really makes me mad because like one of the big reasons I love fantasy is for the like the world. Let's talk about the twist and how this this completely ruined the book for me. Like any hope I had for the book this ruined it. So we find out that Cosima isn't the savior and that um, Layla is but then this begs the question why did she allow this tournament to go on? clearly she is like it's stated from the beginning that she is against this she's against killing um for like no reason she hates that the men are dying for her but she does nothing to stop it and you can argue that okay she needs to be in the background she's using this as, as an opportunity to be in the background so she can like move her plan along but then okay why did the Sovereign team allow this? I hope I said I'm saying this name right. I honestly cannot remember um, <laughs> these characters' names. I just have like a very recollection of the, of the characters who aren't Tobias and Layla because like they just didn't really matter. Like I told you guys to get passionate about books. Like it just, I don't know why there's so many characters in this book when they didn't matter. Okay, so anyway, so why did Layla's dad allow her to step back. Like why did why did he allow her to have like a dummy in place of her? Like how does that serve you in any way, especially when you're trying to kill her? Like this seems like it helps her plan more than it helps your plan. So like why which again it's just like I'm like, how is he ruling this kingdom if he's making these rookie mistakes? And then again, okay, you can argue that okay, um if she's out of the limelight and there's somebody who everybody thinks is the savior, then he can just have an easier time with killing her, and then the savior 
like the savior will be intact and nobody knows the difference. So like people will be like, oh, the savior is still here. But then why didn't he kill her? And like he killed the mother. Like it's revealed that he's the person who, who killed the mother, the other, the first savior before um, Layla. So why didn't he just kill her when she was a baby? And, and on top of that, why like Layla and her friends went down to see the competitors countless times and um, her dad has three assassins in the con competition who's supposed to kill her and they see her. Why didn't they kill her? Why didn't they just kill Tobias for that matter? And how did the Sovereign or Bonus or the father, whatever his name is, how did he not know that Layla was down there? Like, there's a, there's a scene in later in the story where he's, like, angry that Layla's going down there to heal them. But he has three assassins there. How did he not know? How did the word not get back to him that Layla was down there? Like, it's just things like this that made me be, like, this, the twist just, like, rolls up all of these questions that it's, like, who's in charge of this kingdom? How do you not know these simple things? Like, it was just really annoying. And then the whole Cosima thing that like it just the twist rendered her character useless and as like just a tool to make Leo look better. Because like she had no other purpose. <sighs> Dolphy and Pepper were okay. I guess they were co-parents. They didn't really do anything. Um, except I did like Dolphy and Tobias's relationship. I thought that was nice. It was the only relationship that I actually kinda felt was believable. While we're on the topic of believable, I did not believe. Layla and Tobias's love story at all. Like they kind of just fell in love to fall in love. Like yeah they shed some good talks and stuff but then like next thing you know he's painting her like a madman and like they're all they're all the other person thinks about. Well at least Layla's all Tobias thinks about and I'm just like how did you fall in love this quickly with somebody? I'm just really disappointed and like <laughs> upset about this book and like the direction that it went into because I felt like it just had so much potential to be so freaking great but whatever um I don't know if I'm gonna pick up book two but I probably will because I, I just need to know the answers to these questions because like people just did things or didn't do things like why didn't why didn't they just kill Tobias in his sleep and, and like, why didn't they just assassinate Layla? And like, I don't know. It's, it's just, I don't know. And why was Layla like, going around killing everyone around her father, but not her father? Like, and I get that, like, we could explain their plans in book two. But then again, what was the point of book one? I, I want to keep ranting forever. I need to stop because like the more I think about it, the more frustrated I get. So yeah, <laughs> that was kind of my review of The Savior's Champion. Um, I felt like I this was just like a giant rant, um, which I guess that's what a rant review is. I don't know. I'm like super new to this. This is the first few book that I'm like reviewing in this way. Um, I feel like I left out a lot, so I'm hoping that like with each book I review, it gets, it falls out better and with like more structure, um, because I really like doing this and I, I really think it's helping with my writing, so um, I'm going to keep it up. Um, this is like my first one, I know it was, a, it was a little bit hectic and all over the place, so as I go on I want to like have more cohesiveness in the way I need you. <laughs> Not so much just me blurring stuff out and being like, ah, I hate this. But yeah, I'm finished. I don't know what else to say except that I was just, I'm just not a happy camper right now. And just thinking about it just makes me angrier because like I just, I just really had such high hopes for this book. Like, I don't know. It was really sad and disappointing. Not sad, just disappointing. Sad for me because like I had to read it. So yeah, I'm just gonna get out of here because if I don't, I'm just gonna be rambling on forever about this and then this needs to be a stopping point. Um, so if you guys liked this, like the video, 
Um, leave a comment down below of what you thought of the book. If you read it or like what you thought of this review and like how I could make my reviews better and this more, I don't know, not so scattered. Um, I would love to get better at this. And even if you like the book, like maybe you don't, you don't agree with like my points or like you could explain something to me that maybe I just didn't get, just leave it in the comments below. I'll reply. Um, be sweet about it. Like I said, this is an attack on you or Jenna. Um, I think you guys are all great. So, this was just about the book and why I'm like not happy with it. But, that's it. <laughs> I'm finished. Um, I guess I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye!